Hello everyone. So, so for today we are going to take this problem, um, some name here and ACM, mash mook, mash mook and ACM. This is a div one problem number B in one of the contest of code forces and it's a DP question and it's different from the DP questions that we have done until now. So until now we have seen questions in which we used to maximize and minimize values. Today we are going to see a DP question in which we have to calculate the number of the number of let's say the number of good sequences in this case, right? So we have to count, you have to, we have to use DP to find the number of count of a particular given condition in the question. Right, so this is another category of questions that actually appears in DB, DP. So in this question, what we have to do is given a number n and a sequence length k, what we need to do is from the range one to n, we have to find all the all the sequences that are good sequence. And the definition of a good sequence is a sequence in which every ith number divides i plus one th number. For example, if the range, if if we take the first example, which is 3 and 2 so if we take the first example of 3 and 2 the subsequences could be 1 comma 1 2 comma 2 3 comma 3 1 comma 2 1 comma 3 right so I not sure what is it so the answer to this question is 5 yes yeah, so we we if we had written all the all the five combinations now Similarly, if let's say in second example, the the input given is six and four. So which means the range of number is one, two, three, four, five, six. So one of the outputs could be one, 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 right? And so on and so forth. So we have to calculate how many such subsequences occur in is that a good sequence, right? So we have to calculate the total number of good sequences and the numbers can repeat itself that we have already seen. Now, the first and the foremost important question for us to ask is, is this even a DP question or not? And we need to really understand if this is a DP question and if at all this is a DP question, why it is a DP question. Okay, cool. So let us try and solve this. So let us take this one example wherein the number is one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight right let us take this one example and in this range we have to create subsequences of length three okay so now one of the subsequence could be or one of the sequence could be one four eight the other sequence could be two four eight okay now there are some observations that we need to make here. The first observation is that in when when we are at this one here, okay, or when we are at this two here, when we are selecting the first element, the length that we need to solve for is three, which is the remaining length is three here, right? When we selected four, the remaining length is, or the length that we were solving for is two, or the remaining length is one which means this four appeared twice at two different places having similar configuration that is the remaining length that we were solving for is one right so this number let's say this number i okay appeared multiple times in the combination of let's say remaining length i will call it remaining length right so this this is the subsequence that we need to solve for. Now I know this uh, I know this pattern because I have solved this question. And but for you, we have to really really start observing if this is a DP question or not, right? And this case in this case we find that the combination of i and the remaining length is the the combination of i and the remaining length is actually the two variables that are impacting the state, right? And at the two variables, the combination of which we are solving, we are going to solve multiple times, right? So it is not wise to solve the same problem again and again. And this is something that we'll have to be using this information for creating 
a DP based solution for this. Right now, as we have discussed and seen in previous previous problems, that because this is there are two different variables, there are two different variables that are impacting the state of a problem. The DP is going to be of two dimension, right? So the DP is going to be of two dimension. Okay. Now the question, the question it actually says that both n and k, right? The limit of the question for both n and k is two thousand. Right, so both n and k actually n comma k. This is the limit one one to two thousand. Right. So what we will do is for this question we are going to create an memoization array of two thousand five length. It's a two dimensional array. Okay. Now unlike unlike all the previous uh, scenarios where either we were maximizing or minimizing, this is different, and we have to count the total number of such good sequences. So let us start by let us start by writing a function. Okay, so as usual, we will start by int dp two thousand five two thousand five, and we'll let us create a function called int maximum, in which we are taking int n int k. Int i, okay, and this this guy here, n is. So this is the total or maximum value uh, or range maximum value, okay. So range maximum value, and this is a constant. This is a constant, okay. This guy is is the remaining length, remaining length, right? And this is a variable. And this guy here is the current index, or maybe the current, not current index, maybe the current, uh, current value. Of let's say current value of uh, the number. Okay, let I'll call it number, and it can range from one to n, one to n, and this is also a variable. Okay, now let us solve this problem, and we, we like always will start by writing some of the base cases. First, the first base case is if the remaining length is smaller than or equals to zero. Right, we return, and we'll come to. We return something here. Okay, we return something here. Okay, I'll not write what we are going to return for the time being, but we return something here. Okay. Else. Else, if D P of I. Comma k because this is what we saw above, right? I and the remaining length. Comma k is not equals to minus one. We simply return d p of i comma k. Okay. Now let us look and now once we have made these two base cases, there are no other base case, right? So this was one of the base case. So this guy here is a base case wherein the length, the remaining length is actually zero, and the other is when we have already solved the problem. So this is already solved the problem. Already solved the problem. Now let us come to the very interesting part, the most interesting part of this particular question. Which is what happens and how do we calculate the total number of values? Let us create a variable called int answer. Okay, int answer equals to zero. Now, all that we'll have to do is a simple, simple for loop that we'll have to run here, which is for int j equals to i. Okay, and j smaller than equals to n. J 
प्लस इक्वल्स टू आई जे प्लस इक्वल्स टू आई ओके इफ जे इज डिवाइडिंग आई राइट इफ जे इज एक्चुअली डिवाइडिंग आई और सॉरी सॉरी इफ जे इज गेटिंग डिवाइडेड बाई आई विच इज इक्वल्स टू इक्वल्स टू जीरो देन ऑल दैट वी नीड टू डू इज आंसर प्लस इक्वल्स टू विल कॉल दिस फंक्शन अगेन मैक्सिमम ऑफ एन एन इज अ कॉन्स्टेंट नाउ बिकॉज जे वॉज डिवाइडेड बाई आई द रिमेनिंग लेंथ एक्चुअली बिकम्स के माइनस वन राइट and okay so mod here okay and we pass a j along with it now why do we pass a j why do we pass a j is something that we need to see there are couple of interesting things at uh, right now which is first these two variables this is the remaining length okay remaining length and the second variable is j we pass j because we have made a combination of the number the number here the number and the remaining length right so right now the current number that actually got divided was was j so now we have to go ahead and solve for j having a remaining length of k minus 1 so in this case if you look at our example here 4 was the number the 4 was the number that actually got divided by 1 and 4 was the number that got divided by 2 in second case and we saw that we were solving for let's say 4 and the remaining length of 1 right and which is why a problem of let's say 4 and 8 and 4 and 8 was redundant in both the cases which is where in this case in 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 this case we are passing k minus 1 which is the remaining length right and we are passing the variable that actually got divided okay now with that in place the solution is more or less okay so we have already taken a mod what i will also do is uh, i'll go ahead and take mod again for safety reason it doesn't hurt and now this is okay so we can close the loop we can close the loop here as well and dp of i comma k equals to answer and all that we need to now do is return dp of i comma k okay so this wasn't this problem wasn't any different from any other problem that we have seen and if we closely if we closely observe this loop here if we closely observe this loop here without without having having a dp variable right without having a dp variable this is exactly the brute force that we would have done and going back to what we were going to return here we are actually going to return a one from here because this is going to add to the maximum so the reason why i kind of skipped writing it earlier because was we were returning zero in all the cases right and we were trying to maximize and minimize in this case we have to count the total numbers so the return is actually the contribution that this particular case is making in every single case every sequence sequence every single sequence is making a contribution of 1 so we return a 1 when the remaining length becomes 0 right now if if we just simply remove if we simply remove the dp variable if we simply remove this condition here and yes if we simply remove this condition here it actually becomes the normal brute force algorithm that we would have implemented right the only saving grace that we now have is if we have solved for a number if we have solved for a number and the remaining length we never never solve it again and that that is exactly what makes what it makes the uh, makes the code very easy and runs within the time limit right so which is which is where dp actually comes in very handy we do not ever we never actually solve the problem that we have already solved so that is the most important concept of dynamic programming right so this loop here like we discussed is a brute force loop but dp variable the memoization variable that we have in here comes in handy to stop us from solving a problem that we have already solved so this is it this is it for this uh, this video and this problem
uh, i would request you to go through the entire video once again in case this is the first time that you are solving a problem in which you have to count the total number under the given given condition because this is another category of dynamic programming problems that comes in in multiple multiple scenarios and we are going to look at uh, different scenarios in forthcoming videos as well please let me know your feedback in the comments if you have any questions for this video please let me know uh, it in the comments and keep liking the video please subscribe share and spread the word thank you so much